today we're at the track because one of our subscribers Jason asked me to make a video on Harris's sprinting technique Harris is no longer an out-and-out -out sprinter although he started as a sprinter he now concentrates on long jump and hurdles so this video is going to show some of the activities that we have to improve Harris's sprinting technique and his speed before we do any sprint training it's always important to warm up we normally start with a 400 meter jog and then we do some stretching exercises simple warm-up stretching exercise starts with your head and then you just work down your body After loosening up exercises, which also help you Then we do some stretching exercises along the track These exercises help you from getting pulled muscles, particularly in your quads, hamstring Before you start a full training session you need to stretch thoroughly Your warm-up should take 15 to 20 minutes. So good exercise for long jumpers and also high jumpers. Usually finish with what we call a prance, which stretches all parts of your body. Not every athlete can run fast. It depends on your makeup your height and your strength. Two things determine how fast you can run. That's your cadence or frequency and your stride length. So there's a number of activities we can do to increase our frequency. A simple one is just using step ups. So if we have a look at the step ups here Harris. You do these for about 15 to 20 seconds. Three or four reps making sure that your arms are loose. Similar activity is run up and down stairs. So we just see Harris who hasn't been training for about a month. We work him out on these stairs. You run up and down the stairs as quick as possible. When you run up the stairs you try to lift your knees, keep your arms pumping and keep your shoulders relaxed.
one way to improve your frequency is to keep your shoulders relaxed and pump your arms as fast as possible while, while remaining in a stationary position. You have to make sure the elbows go back rather than your hands. Your hands come back as far as your pocket and making sure that your arms don't cross your body. Keep your head steady. Shoulders are steady but loose. So look at that arm movement again. Elbow should be going back. Should maintain approximately 90 degrees between the arm and the forearm, the shoulder and the forearm. If it's too wet to train or Harris has a championship coming up, sometimes runs in front of the mirror before he goes to bed. So he does three reps of 15 seconds and another three reps of 30 seconds checking out his style, his arms, making sure his head's steady and his knees are coming up nice and high. This also gets him fit. To do this activity you have to make sure that your heel makes a circle and you don't drag your heel back. You do as fast as possible on both legs. Another activity we use to help with frequency is running on the spot making sure that the ball of your foot comes down first your arms pumping, staying relaxed in the shoulders, keeping the hips up high. Another fun activity we do, just to help with speed, acceleration, it we call golf balls. Space out the golf balls, various distances. Could be competing against someone else, so you'd have different distances, depending on how fast someone is. Pick the golf balls up and place them back in the box there. Harris has put on his spikes because he's running in the grass. Now he's going to do what we call golf balls. It's a good activity if there's three or four sprinters training because you can place the balls at different distances according to how fast the athlete is. Not good for sibling rivalry. Brothers can run against each other as Harris does with his two younger brothers. So we're off. You can make the last ball about 20 metres away, so he has to get up to a full speed of sprint. Some of the, that's some of the activities we use for increasing frequency. Remember, frequency relies on your speed of your arms and, of course, the turnover of your, your legs, making sure that you don't drag your heel back too far and stay relaxed in the shoulders. Now we look at how we can increase stride length or adjust your stride length to appropriate distance. Harris is quite tall for his age so his stride, stride length is important. Make sure you don't overstride. but if his stride is too short then he's losing distance. Also he must make sure that his foot is facing straight down the track. A very important aspect of stride length is your hip height. If you lower your hips you can't take a long enough stride naturally. If your hips are nice and high, then your stride length can improve. When you're running, you need to be leaning forward slightly with hips up high. When you lower your hips, we call it sitting on the toilet. And you don't sit on the toilet while you're running. So lean forward, natural stride length. If Harris runs with his foot turned out, he's actually losing distance. So if he straightens up his foot, so it's facing straight down the track, he makes up about two to three centimetres. If he takes 50 strides to run the 100 metres, that's about one and a half metres he makes up just by straightening up his foot. Considering some races are won or lost by a hundredth of a second, he's making up more than a hundredth of a second there by straightening up his foot. So make sure that when you're running that your toes are facing straight down the track. You need to take a stride length that is comfortable. 
making sure that your foot comes down underneath your body. Over striding reduces your frequency. If your stride is too short, obviously you're costing yourself distance with each stride. So you must get a stride length that's comfortable and allows you to run at your fastest frequency. This sometimes requires a bit of practice, even testing yourself with different stride lengths. As you get taller, obviously your stride length will increase. Another thing that's important is that you don't cross your knees. Your knees go down the track. When sprinting, only two parts of your body should move. That's your arms and your legs. Head should stay steady. Arms, shoulders should stay relaxed. Hips up high. Toes face, face down the track, also knees. Arms free and easy. Stride length shouldn't be too long. Having done a few activities on frequency and stride length, we now look at the start of a race, whether it's a 100, 200 or 400 metre race. Before we start a race, we always check on reaction times. So here's Harris's brother, checking Harris's reaction time. New marks, set. Bit slow. New marks, set. On your marks, set. So the next one we use is using the arms when he claps. Check Harris's arm speed. On your marks, set. And again. Marks, set. On your marks, set. Before you start a race, you should run on the spot, making sure your shoulders are loose, your arms are moving fast. And then just practice taking off with the arms moving the same frequency. When you're running on the spot, you should make sure that your hips are nice and high and just take off. Now, setting up the blocks is very important. Depending on which foot you push off on, Harris is the opposite to most people. His back foot is his left foot. Now, Harris is now going to show how to set up the blocks the way he sets them up with his back block being his left hand side, his left foot. Okay, so the first block, your front foot, the way I do it is one and a half footsteps back. And the back block is um, one footstep, which is three from the line. Two and a half back, and the the right foot is one and a half back. Now crouching down, Harris. So when you crouch down, your arm should be about shoulder shoulder width apart, and your shoulder should be crouched down, knees on the ground, this. head down, waiting for the starter, straight back on the mark, set. Leaning forward, I advise Harris to try to push the, the blocks out of the ground with his back foot. You have to keep your feet low to the ground as you push off. When you push off, you have to push hard. In the set position, Harris is ready to push off with his back foot, keep his feet come through low and his arms pump up high. When Harris runs in a sprint, I advise him to focus on a point at the end of the track. Always assume that the finishing line is about 10 metres past where it actually is, so he doesn't slow down before the finishing line. In this case, he'd be focusing on a point on the building in the distance and looking at that. Keep your head steady, your eyes focused down the track, and only move your arms and your legs, keeping shoulders nice and loose and making sure that the hips are high, knees coming up high and making sure that his heels don't drag back too far. They come through as quick as possible with a normal and natural stride that allows him to increase his frequency. On your mark.
so Harris is going to look at a spot in the distance. Set. Now it's up to you Jason to practice. Best thing to do if you're going to be a sprinter is practice various diff distances. We usually do reps of three, maybe 350 meter sprints, then 375 meter sprints, then 390 meter sprints, and then three 100 meter sprints. Try, try to follow the techniques shown in this video, then hopefully your times will come down. Remember the two important things, Jason, that is your frequency and your stride length. Here's Harris practicing against his younger brother. Always remain relaxed when you're practicing because if you're relaxed, your arms can move much more freely and much faster. Don't overstride and keep your hips up high, your head, head steady. Okay, Jason, hope those tips will help your running technique.